So we hear all the time about new moons being times to plant seeds. I even say it myself. Or full moons of being times to cast spells to let go. But I'm here to explain why I don't recommend that you practice magic specifically around those times. And then explain when you should try and manifest instead. Hi, I'm Marin, an astrologer and author and a current philosophy and psychology student practicing a synthesis of traditional Hellenistic astrology with modern psychological counseling skills to provide grounded spiritual guidance. If you are interested to hear why this is the case, make sure that you like and subscribe in his post notes so you never miss an upload describing what the stars have in store for you. And before we get started, this video is actually brought to you by Rashi Collective, which is my platform newly launched, which is connecting spiritual practitioners with their ideal clients. So we are basically a metaphysical Yelp. We are there to ground the woo and provide a space for spiritual, esoteric, or metaphysical practitioners like astrologers, tarot readers, Reiki healers, etc. to place their services online. And then clients can search for their energetic needs and get their needs met. So Rashi is a space for you to hold space. And if you are part of the spiritual community, if you are a witch looking to offer any type of services as well, you can check that out all down below. So in witchcraft or spiritual communities, it's really common to hear about lunar magic ceremonies. So while this is not necessarily a bad thing, there are some basic astrological principles and astrology does not equal magic, does not equal spirituality. But there are some astrological principles that inform my practice of not doing so and many other um, well-read, astrologically inclined witches as well. So when a planet is within seven and a half degrees of the sun, it's considered combust. This can be via conjunction or via opposition. It's rendered especially useless when within three degrees of being under the sun's beams. So as a reminder, new moons are when the moon is conjunct the sun and full moons are when the moon is opposite the sun. So because the new moon is conjunct the sun, it's therefore blinded and overpowered. The moon signifies manifested reality like the body, nourishment, or emotional presence and it's therefore hindered from conscious realization of those topics. As the full moon is then opposite the sun, it's directly ravaged by the sun's rays. The moon is brutally inflamed, so often the culminatory qualities of the full moon are over the top or vicious. It makes sense that for a new moon, it's a time of seeds being planted in a new area of life for each of us, and that'll be whatever astrological house it falls in. However, I specifically advise against lunar manifestation practices at the time of the exact new moon, and I recommend waiting a day or two instead. The new moon phase is great energy for bringing new things into being, but not the exact new moon when the moon is under the sun's beams. This was a game changer to my own astrological magic practices, which used to focus on like trying to light my spell or light my candle or cast my spell exactly at the time of the new moon, which is actually an obscured, non-conducive energy to manifest intentionally. Similarly, the full moon phase is a good time for releasing, but I would not attempt to harness this energy for any type of practices like spell casting or candle carving, crystal charging, etc let go and have fun without trying to rein in the volatile energy during that time. Once the moon has separated further from the opposition to the sun, it would be a more appropriate time for any crystal charging or cleansing releasing practices. Generally, my recommendation for waiting a few days means until the moon has moved into the next astrological sign. Though if that does mean that the moon would be in an unideal or flat out like challenging position, it could mean just waiting until the moon is later in the sign of that new or full moon. Or it could mean waiting even a few days longer when the moon is two or three signs over so that the moon is just finally not in a tough spot. So if I am practicing lunar magic around a lunation, which I pretty much always am, I am for sure not doing it when that lunation is exact or that day of generally. I'm just respecting that energy to be there without me manipulating it 
especially for eclipses. Don't even get me started. Like, don't try to do any of this shit around an eclipse. They're malefic in general. This is an example how, even though they're well-intentioned, some of the New Age or some of the more recent contemporary witchcraft practices aren't necessarily fully understanding of the rationale that they're tuning into. Not a judgment, just simply, you know, a little recall. So let me know down below your experiences and routine that you're used to with lunar manifesting and whether your personal experiences agree or disagree and complement or go against the recommendations and the perspective that I am sharing on this really um, profound realization that has changed the way that I manifest around the lunations for better. So if you enjoyed this and you are here for this content, make sure that you like and subscribe. It really helps out so more people can see this message about what the uh, reality and underlying rationale for these lunar practices is rooted in. Check out my forecasts and my other witchy lifestyle videos down below. Otherwise, sending much love and I will see you in the next video. Well, there is one thing you're all forgetting.